During the same role play at the women's facility, the two players came up with another tactic, another way to block change. We've gotten you a bus pass, I've given you schedules, I've set up interviews, and you repeatedly don't go. You just blow it off like it doesn't even matter. Do you well, want to stay out? Yes, I do. It does matter to me, but I would like to work outside. Is that, that's the kind of work I like doing. Well, I'm sure Long we would all like to have a primo job that makes us extremely happy, but right now you need to get it together. You need to get something that's going to work for you so that you can get on your feet so that you don't go back into the system so I don't have to sit here with handcuffs and lock you up again and throw you back in. <laughs> Do you like your job? <laughs> What did you observe the parolee doing that is an obstacle to change? She was very defensive and very aggressive there at the end when she turned around and she said, well, do you like your job? Well, you have just identified another tactic. When the parolee turns to the parole officer and says, do you like your job, this is really a diversion from the point. I mean, what does this have to do with anything? Nothing at all. What it does is, again, it gets the focus off the parolee and it makes it whether the parole officer likes her job, as if that matters in this situation. Do you like your job? Diversion. Changing the subject. Another way to steer attention away from ourselves. Back at the men's facility, the group considers examples of diversion. 94 hours on parole. And I was working at the Red Lobster, making cash every night. And my girlfriend would be at home when I would come home, and I'd walk through Capitol Hill. And I'm a crack addict, so coming through Capitol Hill, if, if you know anything about that area, it's crack infested. And after about six weeks, I fell. I relapsed. I bought some crack one night. And when I came back, she knew I had cash every night. And she knew that I would have anywhere between 130, 150, anywhere in that area. So the first thing I did when I walked in is I gave her 40 bucks to try to keep her from asking me about the rest of the money. Can you tell me why then diversion as a tactic gets in the way of change big time? It allows you to look at everything except for the problem at hand. It allows you to, to one, take control of the situation to where you don't have to look at yourself you have some other thing that you're doing to keep a far away from possible the truth of the matter. Diversion is really a control tactic because you are the one who knows. You are the one who has the person in the palm of your hand as you are telling that person certain things to lead that person off track. Other thoughts about how diversion as a tactic interferes with change. You're lying to yourself, you're lying to other people all around you. Again, you know, it's for myself, I lied a lot before, you know, and it'd be just getting me back in the same cycle all over again, you know, and it's then I'd start, I'd start doubting myself again, and then it'd just be one excuse after another. When I'm using diversion against somebody, what would keep me from changing them is uh, I enjoy it. I actually enjoy using it. I mean, I see the power, I see the, the thrust of, yeah, I got another, another, another one bites the dust again, I won. You know, uh, that keeps me a lot from wanting to change by using them tactics. Good point. There's an excitement to it. Yes. That you can really get somebody going and just watch them right before your very eyes. So really diversion isn't just shifting a subject, but it's the power, it's the control, it's turning something back on somebody. By diverting attention away from ourselves, the issue is never faced. Diversion is another way of changing the subject, moving the spotlight away from ourselves. Diversion is a way of controlling others, and diversion is a way of lying to ourselves to avoid looking at our need to change.